series about how to set up your own home PCR lab. So the next time you find a mushroom that you can't make heads or tails of, you can extract the DNA, amplify it and send it off to a lab where for just a few bucks they'll turn it into a sequence. Who is this series for? It's really for anyone. You don't need a background in biology or in chemistry. You will need a few hundred dollars um, to buy the equipment and you're also going to need a bit of a space in your kitchen or in the desk in which to do everything, although everything does pack away very small. I'm not an expert and I won't be able to explain to you in great detail what, what PCR or DNA amplification is. I'm literally just going to take you through the steps that are entailed. Um, i.e. following the recipe. I do have a bunch of resources attached to the video, like a step-by-step -step guide, a list of things you're gonna need and so on, and some great videos that explain what exactly PCR is. So this is what things look like when I put them up on the counter. Alright, let's talk about hardware. The most important piece in all of this is something called a thermal cycler. It's a piece of equipment that connects to your computer and you program it. Um, and what it is, it's really just sort of a piece of aluminum with eight wells that either gets heated by a heating element or it has a fan down there and gets cooled. And we're going to learn later why that is important. These um, cost um, over $600 new, this one here from a company called Mini PCR. However, if you go on eBay, you will find uh, used ones sold by labs, maybe getting rid of them that are a lot cheaper. You can get them for, I think, $300 or so upwards. That's your most important piece. The next piece of hardware is um, a centrifuge. It opens up, it has room for 16 uh, nanotubes. Um, and it spins at speed up to, I think, 12,000 uh, RPM. And what it does do, it uh, sort of separates the debris uh, from your sample, which is going to go to the bottom of the tube, um, and the DNA, which is sort of going to float a little bit higher up. So it allows you to cleanly uh, get the DNA out of your tubes. Not everybody uses centrifuge. You could probably get away with not using one if you're willing to compromise success a little bit, but I use it just because I bought it as part of my package, uh, and why not? This one, I think, retails for about $100, but if you go on eBay, once again, you can find cheaper used centrifuges. And like I said, if you're not gonna use one at all, you're probably gonna be okay most of the time. And finally, here's my gel electrophoresis setup. This is, um, um, Piece of hardware where you can um, you're going to pour a gel and then you're going to put it in there and then you're going to um, run a current through it and that's going to show you whether your samples uh, worked out or not. Here is where you cast the gels. This allows you to look at it um, under a certain kind of illumin illumination, certain kind of light, and this makes it look a little bit brighter when you look through it. We're going to uh, look at all that a little bit later once we get to that stage in the process. And then here are a few other things you're going to need. One is a pair of tweezers with a really sharp tip. You can see it here because you're going to use them to rip some gill tissue from the mushroom and you're going to have to do that very precisely. You're going to need a, a marker, a permanent marker, because you're going to label your tubes and you don't want uh, the labeling to come off. Um, you're going to need a small container, plastic container, just for like waste. Um, a couple of trays where to sort of put your tubes so they don't fall over. Um, I use a couple of shot glasses, one for alcohol, one for distilled water, just because it's easier to uh, access. For example, with the alcohol, I often disinfect my hands and it's easy to do that. And then finally, um, you're going to need three micro pipettes, um, different sizes. Um, one of them is a 1 to 10 microliter, one of them is a 2 to 20 microliter, and then one is a 20 to 200 microliter, and they have these little wheels uh, up here where you can adjust um, how much uh, liquid gets uh, uh, taken up uh, by the pipette tips. We're gonna go through all that in a little bit when we go through the process. 
next consumables you're going to need pipette tips for the pipettes that we just saw and you're going to need some uh, 10 uh, microliter pipette tips which are these guys and then you're going to need some 200 microliter pipette tips so they're slightly larger um, and i recommend you initially buy them in those plastic boxes but after you've used up a box it's a waste to buy them again you can buy them loose on ebay in these sort of thousand packs and as long as you wear gloves you can just put them in the empty boxes you're going to need uh, tubes you're first going to need like really tiny tubes like two uh, they're 0.2 milliliter tubes um, and they come sort of single as singles or they also come as strips i use the strips to send it to my lab because they actually want that um, but these are obviously a bit cheaper you're going to need a lot of tubes but not a lot of them they're 1.7 milliliter tubes and you're also going to need gloves for every single PCR um, so, um, process, you're going to need a fresh pair of gloves. Next thing is reagents, another word for chemicals. You're going to need some distilled water, which you can just buy in the drugstore, and it will last you a very long time. You're going to also buy some um, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning your hands and cleaning your equipment. Once again, that's from the drugstore and it's quite cheap. The next thing you're going to need is sodium hydroxide. I bought it as granules. It's not expensive. It's used in soap making. You can buy it on eBay or Amazon and I turned it into a liquid. It's used to break down the fungal tissue. Try not to touch it. It's quite basic. It can hurt your hands. Um, you're going to need some Tris EDTA buffer um, 10 times. It's a very specific item. I bought it on Amazon, but you can also buy it in other places online. It's all on the equipment list that's attached to the video. This one's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to use very minute amounts of it. So it's going to last you a very long time. You're also going to need 20 times TPE, which is, I think, another kind of Tris buffer. Um, and you're going to dilute it 20 to 1. So I keep it in the fridge. You don't actually have to keep it in the fridge. Uh, but that's used for the gel electrophoresis. Next and last, uh, you're going to need some uh, really specific reagents. You're going to need a couple of fungal primers, and they're called ITS-1 and ITS-4. Those are the really important uh, primers that are used for most uh, fungal PCR. Um, I bought mine at a place called the Odin, but there's other places online that will also sell you fungal uh, primers. And you're going to need some master mix and you're going to need quite a bit of it. And once again, I bought mine from the Odin, but you can buy them at, in other places as well. You're going to need something called loading dye or loading buffer. That's going to uh, stain your DNA samples for the gel electrophoresis. Um, and then finally, you're also going to need some something to stain the agar with. This one's called gel green. Um, and the, this one is not terribly cheap, but once again, a little goes a very long way. And those are all the reagents you're going to need.